All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is January 26th. We got ourselves a Friday. Happy Friday to everyone out there. We got a good size NBA slate to dive into in today's video like we always do. I'm going to go through each and every one of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that we like within the game. But as always... Keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where all of my final plays, what I'm actually rolling with myself, those plays will live. Last night, we go three and one. We'll take the profit, I will say. I will say. And obviously, sports betting's filled with what it could have should us, but we should have gone four and oh. Carl Anthony Towns had like three rebounds heading into the fourth quarter, and he had a million rebounds in the fourth. So, Carl Anthony Towns ruins the sweep there. But the Celtics minus six and a half, no sweat. Nuggets and Knicks under 224 and a half, no sweat. And then Julius Randle cashes in, e I think it was the first half. Um, so. We shall take that. We are still on this heater. I keep telling you guys, at some point, this heater has to die down. But why not ride the wave while we're on it, right? We're like hanging 10 here with all of these flames that we're throwing out. But uh, yeah, the fun does not stop there. We go ahead and lock in another ride of the day. Three cha-chings. Are we abusing the soundboard again? This one's coming in from Nicholas. He had Jason Tatum under eight and a half rebounds. He gave us Max Struess over 19 and a half PRAs two days ago, right? Both of these have one on the hook. Tatum finishes with eight rebounds. So I guess Nicholas, we're going to start calling him Captain Hook around here because both of his plays have one on the hook. Uh, Max Struess finished with 20. He needed 19 and a half. Jason Tatum finished with eight. We didn't want him to get to nine um, at eight and a half there. So shout out to Nick, guys. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, all you have to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Give me some absolute bangers down there, guys, using that hashtag. And I'm jumping on board with one person's pick in the comments, giving you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. Now, if you win, we continue to ride with you like we have with Nicholas here for the last two videos. So we'll keep an eye out for Nicholas's picks in the comments today. You got to kind of get them in with a reasonable time. Actually, Nick Nicholas got his chance because someone won and then never dropped their ride of the day on the next video. So next man up. That's why you got to use those hashtag ride of the days in the comments. Also, shouting out the ride of the day on my X slash Twitter at EvGuyBoston. Make sure to follow me there. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into game number one here. Make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button and hitting that like button. Um, you guys have been absolutely crazy as of late. And I mean crazy. Like, like almost want to sound the psycho alert alarm crazy on how supportive you've been. But uh, yeah, I can't thank you guys enough for uh, everything as of late. But let's go ahead and jump into game number one here. We have Atlanta hosting Dallas. Now, this spread kind of threw me for a loop uh, just looking at it this morning because, you know, Dallas has been struggling as has Atlanta, um, but this spread, I would have thought that Dallas would be more heavily favored, I guess. They do have a look look ahead spot against Sacramento um, tomorrow, so they have to go from uh, Atlanta to Sacramento. Maybe that's part of the reason here. Trey Young is also a game-time decision uh, in concussion protocol, so not, not sure if he's playing or not or what the latest is on that. Uh, but nonetheless, this is just such a weird line. Like, again, I thought that this would be maybe four and a half or so uh, because you, the only argument I could see being made is that, well, Dallas is struggling. It's like, yeah, Atlanta may be struggling just as much, if not more, right? So uh, I'll lean towards Dallas here. I don't think that I end up pulling the trigger because... <laughs> Smells like a trap, guys. Like, it, it, it truly does. It seems like it's too good to be true of a line there where I think Dallas is uh, just a better team than Atlanta here. Now, Kyrie Irving's on the injury report. Uh, that could be a huge thing, but so is Clint Capella. Um, obviously, De um, DeAndre Hunter has been there, and then Trey Young for the, the Hawks. So you can't even really make the injury report argument as to why this spread is what it is. So... Again, I don't think we pulled the trigger. I've done crazier things. I could tell you guys right now, I don't think we pulled the trigger, but I am still leaning uh, Dallas in this spot. And then speaking of Kyrie Irving, before we get to the total, we'll talk about him. I don't mind his over 10.5 rebounds plus assists. Now, this is coming from both a trends perspective. He's hit this in nine of his last 10 games. The only game he didn't hit it in was last game against the Celtics, and he finished at nine. So, like, he was right there, right? Um, and... From a volume perspective, the dude's averaging in his last seven games, 10 potential assists and 10 rebound chances. As a floor, we should be looking at 10 in the stat category for him. So you're not going to tell me he's going to get an accidental assist or accidental rebound somewhere. 
I, I think he could. Um, and this is a team that has struggled as of late in terms of Atlanta in assists. So that's obviously Kyrie's stronger category too. Uh, sixth most assists to the shooting guard position in the last six games. And this totals way up there, 243. I think a lot of paces to be played here. Um, I hate betting on Kyrie because I am a Celtics fan and obviously the sort of the scorned uh, scorned X there. But I do think that this could be a good spot. So keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if we roll this. Again, he's questionable. So we'll see if he even suits up. Now, Speaking of the total here, it is a high number at 243, but much like some of the games we dug into yesterday, when you have just two fast-paced teams, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm loving the over, but I can't get behind the under. Does that make sense? So it's almost like you're saving yourself the potential loss. I don't know if I end up rolling with the over in terms of a final play, but Atlanta, over the last 10 games, fifth fastest team, and Dallas, the 10th fastest team in the entire league, 243 seems like something that they could get, right? Neither one of these teams is a great defensive team. Um, I would say that they struggle with their offensive efficiency uh, from time to time, but you know, if you put two bad defenses together, points are bound to be scored. So I'm going to lean towards I'm going to lean slightly towards the uh, over here. Don't know if that even makes its way into a final play. All right, Charlotte taking on the Rockets here. Charlotte is at home. They're getting five and a half points. Houston's been a tough to bet on road team this season. They're four, uh, four and 15 straight up on the road this year. And then when it comes to against the spread, seven and 12. And we've said that kind of all year long, right? Like this is a team that has exceeded expectations, but has just struggled on the road uh, overall. Like their, their, their game at home has been honestly great 16 and 8 from a team that no one really knew exactly what to expect from um anything like that and I think it's a good spot for them they're coming off of two straight losses here one against Boston and then they played uh Portland in which they're 10 point favorites they lost the game by six so I do think that the Rockets um have what it takes to come in here and win this game by six points uh do I love it maybe not because you know I just got finished telling you how it's Houston on the road kind of scary but nonetheless, um, can't really back Charlotte here, especially, uh, you know, they, they go and beat Minnesota and it's like, rah, rah, good game. And then they get beat by uh, Detroit and Detroit covered against them. Uh, so two things wrong with that sentence, right? Detroit wins and they covered. Uh, but Charlotte's almost, not to say just as bad, but <laughs> getting there. Uh, so give me Houston in this spot. I also like the over 223 and a half. So to this line, Charlotte, uh, you know, has been kind of dink and donking, but so is Houston. And that's come at their home games and away games and sort of the difference there. Because, like I told you guys, this Houston team is not the same team when they are on the road. That defense takes a massive dip um, and everything like that. And then when you look at it from a pace of play, like, yeah, they're still probably going to play pretty slow and as are the Hornets. But if I don't think that that defensive intensity is going to be there from Houston... I don't think Charlotte's playing defense, much like the first game we talked about. Two defenses that I don't think are totally going to show up. Asking for 224 points ain't all that much, so I'm going to lean towards the over in that spot. Now, a player prop here in this spot, and maybe we're getting a little bit too greedy here, but Brandon Miller over 25 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Uh, he's been on fire in the last four games. He's gone 30 plus in that category each and every time. Um, he's come damn near to hitting this with his points in four straight games as well, but obviously like you know what goes up must come down right and he's been up I think maybe he has one more game in him uh, to be able to do this uh, I do think you know a safer play not a safer play but one that maybe even has a better chance of hitting might be looking at his 22 and a half points plus rebounds he's not the not the guy that's getting the most assists out there um, in his last seven games here Brandon Miller has been has, has been averaging, um, I believe, let's see where it is, four potential assists per game. So you can really count on two assists from him. That doesn't help you get to that 25 mark, right? Or 26 marks you'd need. So uh, points plus rebounds, maybe a, a better lean there uh, in that spot. But yeah, I mean, the line's been juiced. We we used to get it at 22 and a half. Then last time we posted it with our sleeper pick, it was 23 and a half. And now all of a sudden it's 25 and a half. So sometimes these plays just get juiced through the moon when they're on fire. But nonetheless, I don't necessarily mind that. Other player props in this game, I don't really have anything that jumps kind of off the page to me. But speaking of something that jumps off the page, guys... Odds Jam. If you have not checked out Odds Jam yet, now is the time to do so. You can get a great deal with the link in the pinned comment. You get seven days free, and if you use the promo code Guy Boston, you get 25% off your first month. We'll take you through the two favorite tools, or two of my favorite tools that Odds Jam offers. They have so many tools here on the left, but this is the positive expected value tab. What this does is identifies missed price lines in the market. So, for example, Malcolm Brogdon, over two and a half three-pointers made. It's still a plus 165 play, right? 
right? So it doesn't mean it's definitely going to hit. But if you expand this and look at where other sportsbooks have this, average odds of plus 138. So you are getting so much value there. You have um, Bet Online plus 136, Vodog plus 135, Fanatics plus 130, ESPN Bet plus 135, Bovada plus 140. But again, over on FanDuel plus 165. This is a tried and true way to long term profit sports betting because what you're doing is taking the sports books, pinning them up against each other, and capitalizing on their mistakes. Who does not love capitalizing on sports books mistakes, right? That's obviously the mispriced line in the market. Now, speaking of sports books mistakes, arbitrage betting. We did a whole video on this, and this is probably my favorite tool over on Odds Jam because. What other tool makes it this easy to identify? So this is a soccer match here where both teams to score, you could take no on FanDuel and yes on DraftKings. Either, you know, they do score or they don't score. There's no way around it. This game has to end in one of those results, but you could bet on either side there. So say you put 100 bucks over on FanDuel, you could put 123.95 or 124 to make it simpler over on DraftKings and profit $18. Now, this is a really good percentage. Um, when we made that video, we were grinding out one or two percenters, but nonetheless, guys, this is really risk-free sports betting. The game either has to have both teams score or, you know, both teams don't score. And you could take both sides of it. Yes, you cut down your profit margins if you were to take one side and it hits. Sure, you make more money, but this is risk-free. If you had a money tree out back, no doubt you'd go out there and take a dollar or two off it every single day. Go check out Odds Jam, guys. Link in the pinned comment. Again, seven days free with that link. You want a little bit spicier of a deal, use code GUYBOSTON and you get that percentage off. Go check it out. Link in the pinned comment. Next up, we got the Pacers hosting the Suns in this spot. So good win for the Pacers. I know we kind of leaned that way, but it was kind of wishy-washy yesterday's video. Um, but good to see that, you know, we kind of even had our eye on the fastball there. Um, I don't like this spot for them today, though. Yes, they're still at home, but this is a Suns team that, while you can make the argument they've kind of beat up on some teams that obviously weren't that great, um, but they're coming in here off of seven straight wins and eight of their last ten here. Uh, the, uh, the, the Pacers being one of those teams that they beat now. Tyrese Halliburton, I believe, is sitting out yet again. Obviously, the NBA, anything can happen. I've seen a couple sites list him as out. A couple sites list him as doubtful. Um, that would change this spot for me because right now you have the Pacers on a back-to-back -back in which I'm not envisioning a good spot for them against a team that is playing, you know, uh, good basketball, right? And this Pacers team, one and seven in no rest situations this season against the spread, which is pretty damn terrible. Some of those with Halliburton, some of those without, I understand. But give me Phoenix here minus the points. We might keep an eye on this or buy an additional point. I'd love to get this down to like three and a half or three for whatever reason, I do think it's going to be a fast-paced game. And when that happens, the Pacers kind of excel um, and obviously, you know, move the tempo here. So I'm going to lean towards uh, the Suns in this one. I'll also take a peek at the over just because the Pacers are at home here. Um, and we even saw it last night too, right? Like we liked the over in that game. They win 134 to 122. I do think the Suns, you know, play a little bit slower, obviously, than the Sixers. Uh, but that being said, I just, I just feel like, you know, anything in the 240s there with the Pacers and the pace of play that they've been playing at, second fastest team in the last 10 games here, uh, you know, you got to consider that there's going to be up and down the court, up and down the court. And the Suns can play that basketball too, right? It's not like they rely on their defense. Like this is a team that's uh, not slow. They're just kind of middle of the pack right now. So I am going to go ahead and envision them, you know, their average of 116 and a half per game point scored. If they get that up to, you know, 125, another 10 points because of the pace, which is uh, pretty much what the Pacers allow per game. Like I think this one cruises over. So I'm going to lean towards the over there as well. Now, player prop wise, Man, I went back and forth on some player props here. Ultimately ended on Grayson Allen over two and a half three-pointers made. Why? Well, he's hit it in eight of his last 10 games. He's hit it in six straight games, and it's plus money on most sports books as of right now. Plus 108 on FanDuel. The dude's taking tons of them. Um, yes, he had a couple games where I think he hit, yeah, he hit nine and eight, or maybe nine in both games uh, recently, which is kind of crazy, right? Uh, but nonetheless, you know, that, that kind of is going to weigh the, the sample size, so I guess it's hard to judge because he's attempting seven threes per game in his last um, 10 here. But again, that's with, you know, 10 plus in two games. But he's shooting 56% from beyond the arc right now. Uh, this obviously is a Pacers team that this year has defended the perimeter really well. But in their last seven games here, uh, they are just, you know, they allow the seventh most threes to the small forward position, the position in which Grayson Allen's starting at. So yes, three threes from him is a lot. He's not always the most involved, but the dude's shooting at a great clip right now. Um, and let's see that continue, right? Especially in a back and forth up-tempo game in which he's going to hit some transition threes, hopefully. 
All right, Toronto taking on the Clippers here. You have one team that is playing really, really, really well as of late. Um, eight and two in the last ten of the Clippers. And then you have the reverse side, the Toronto Raptors. You know how I was like, I think that that was a good team, a good trade for both teams, the Knicks and the Raptors. Well, they've gone in different directions. The Knicks have been killing it. Raptors, not so much. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's fine to keep fading the Raptors. They're getting a lot of points here, seven and a half. So I could see why it probably stays off some people's final plays. Um, it might stay off of mine. But, yeah, this Clippers team has made us money. Uh, I think they're a really good team. They, they truly are. Like, they're covering big numbers, too. Uh, they beat Brooklyn by 10 plus. They needed to do that. Same thing with the Lakers, right? Um, Memphis, they played. They beat them by nine and a half. Um, or they covered their nine and a half spread. Like, this is a team that, you know, is able to, to cover their line. Now, in that same breath, I can say, well, these two teams played back at the beginning of the month and Toronto was 11 and a half point dogs, right? They only lose by, what was it, six or seven points, right? So Clippers didn't cover this line and they didn't cover uh, the line at the time there too. And the Clippers are on the road now. Uh, they're not as great on the road as they are at home. They're nine and 10 against the spread here on the road, um, nine and 10 straight up as well. So it's like, okay, fine. Maybe you can make that argument, but are the Raptors good at home? No, 10 and 12 against the spread, uh, 10 and 12 straight up. Like you have two teams that don't really specialize in their location. So just give me the more talented team, right? So I'll go ahead and lean towards the Clippers. And then I guess based on that, I'm also going to take a peek at the under here because this Clippers team um in terms of how they've been playing and how they've been winning uh they've been playing some some good basketball offensively but I do still see the defense sort of in them if that makes sense uh they've been allowing plenty of points but that's because they've been playing with a high pace I think a team like Toronto here they're gonna slow down and absolutely just kind of like you know thumb down and, and squish so though you, the, the team that's playing better should dictate the pace, and that team has been crushing this number. Um, I still like the under. I know it's kind of crazy, but give me the under. I think this finishes in the 220s. In terms of a player prop, I like James Harden's over and assists. Uh, it's at 8.5 right now. I like the spot. Um, this is at minus 140 on BetMGM. Yes, it's juicy, but compared to DraftKings, minus 166. There is some value there. Shout out to Odds Jam for helping me find that. Uh, but nonetheless, 8 of last 10, he's cash us in. Uh, he's getting double digits this assist left and right and this is a Raptors team that you know not necessarily uh great in terms of defending assists not necessarily terrible when they give up assists to point guards but they've been giving up plenty of assists here um fifth most in the entire league to all positions to point guards 10th most so it drops a little bit here uh he's averaging about 14 potential assists over his last seven games so he should have a floor right around seven or eight and last time he played Toronto which again that game was at the beginning of the month right 11 assists so yeah I like that spot for Harden I just think that uh he's really obviously uh diming it out and looking to dish the rock and you know they've been successful in this game plan why would they step out of it so give me him over and assists all right, Memphis taking on Orlando. Obviously, Memphis has been in the, the crapper here. Uh, they did get a nice win against Miami. They also beat Toronto, which we just kind of talked about. Shouldn't really even say that much. But they have two straight wins here. Orlando uh, has not really looked great. Like, this is a team that played really, really well at the beginning of the year. I think a lot of people were excited about this Orlando team because they're so young. And they're still very good against the spread. Um I just don't love the way that they're playing as of right now. So five points on the road just seems a little bit too much to lay. So uh, unfortunately, I'm going to lean towards the Grizzlies. I could probably almost guarantee you right now this isn't a play that I envision becoming a final play. This is probably one of the more trash games on the board today. But nonetheless, that is, I guess, just where my head is at at the time of, of recording here. So yeah, I'll, I'll stick away from this game most likely. But as of right now, I guess if there's a gun to my head and there's not, uh, I do think that I lean towards uh, the, the Grizz in this spot just because I guess they played better basketball and we're looking at a team in which um, they're going up against that. I just can't fully get behind. Right. So, yeah, don't really love it. In terms of a total, I mean, you look at this and you say, okay, well, the Grizzlies, uh, their offense has struggled. Right. And you look at Orlando. Okay, well, their offense has struggled. And you're like, oh, well, I'll go under. Right. The total's 212. Yes, I'll lean towards the under, but another reason to probably not make this a final play because that total is so damn low. Um, so yeah, probably sticking away from that, I'd lean towards the under because what have these teams showed you offensively or defensively that, you know, we can trust any sort of pace or anything. Um, but, you know, not my favorite game. Like I said, I also probably don't make any player prop plays in this game as well. Just kind of a, a rough game. So apologies for that. But if you came here looking specifically for an Orlando and Memphis pick, then you are just as much of a degenerate as I am. And I love you for it. But we just don't have that for you today. It's not in the arsenal.
All right, we got the Bucks taking on the Cavs. I will say Giannis, questionable in this spot, so we're going to want to keep an eye on that. Nothing major injury-wise on Cleveland's side of things. We just saw this game a couple nights ago. We were on Cleveland plus 8.5. They lose by 10 points. That was our only loss of the night, so yes, we still remember that sting, uh, much like we'll remember Carl Anthony Towns ruining our sweep from last night. But in this spot, I think I flip sides. Uh, coaching change with the Bucks, and I know I swore off of, I pretty much damn near swore off of betting the Bucks, um, you know, for the rest of the season because they've been so bad against the spread, but they looked pretty good. They kind of ha- were in control of that game for most of the damn game uh, against Cleveland, and there's no different situation here. Like, it should just be a run-it-back type of a thing. Now, the one thing that kind of concerns me is the books came in at, you know, five and a half, and it's like, whoa, they just won by 10. What else has changed, right? And yet, they're dropping that five and a half number, um, and I believe it may even be getting bigger. Like, this opened at five and a half, and I think I've seen a couple books jump to six already. So it's like uh, they they maybe don't love the fact that, you know, people are are hammering the bucks. Maybe they like the fact that, you know, they, they the bucks do win, but they came in at five and a half no matter what, right? That was their line that the books opened up at. So a little bit of dissecting and line reading to go on there. But yeah, we're just going to trust the number five and a half. It's it's crazy to, to lean bucks because they've been so bad against the spread. But maybe things are a little bit different now uh, with Doc in charge there. Maybe, right? Like take that with a grain of salt. Um, in terms of a total here, 237 and a half. It's up there. We saw the pace that these two teams can play with, but... I think it slows down in this game. Like, I think what Cleveland does is, all right, we have to play defense. We tried to run and gun with them, and we lose 126 to 116, right? Um, And we know the Bucs play super fast, uh, but this Cleveland team, not necessarily. Cleveland has hit the only game in their last eight games that went over um, was this last game against the Bucs. So if they play some defense, I think this one slows down a little bit, making that five and a half look, okay, maybe questionable because the Bucs can't just run away with it and they're being locked up but I'll still take the under as well as the Bucks minus five and a half and then a spot I don't mind for a player prop just because I believe the line is super high is going to be Donovan Mitchell under 43 and a half points rebounds and assists also don't mind his under points and assists line but he's hit the under here in plenty of games he's hit the under in 67% of games this season um, he's played three games against Milwaukee this year he went over once um, that was on the 29th of December he finished with 49 so he did hit it pretty substantially but then he's gone under in the last two games and and obviously, with Mobley out, with Garland out, I think Milwaukee knows to kind of focus in on him. And Doc Rivers, defensive-minded coach, maybe he's got some tricks up his sleeve. So we'll see if that makes its way into the final plays. Keep an eye on the pin comment. All right, guys, before we get to the last two games, you've made it this far into the video, but I'm not going to ask you to comment the number because we know people are kind of sleazeballing and just seeing the numbers and commenting this. So what I'm going to ask you is a question. This might spice the videos up a little bit here, but if you've made it 22 minutes into the video, I want you to give me your Mount Rushmore of cereals. Yes, that's kind of crazy, but your top four cereals in no real order. Mine's going to be, um, I probably should have thought about this before throwing the question out. I think I got to go, pe- I'm thinking about my childhood. Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Mine's weird. Frosted Cheerios. Um, Lucky Charms, fine. Kind of a chalked pick. And then one that's probably going to throw some people through a, you know, for a loop here, but Life Cereal. Like, there's something about the simplicity of that. Um, I'd probably say if I had an alternate, it might replace Frosted Cheerios, but I'd go Raisin Bran as well. So maybe I got, like, this weird eclectic palette of cereals because I have sweet, you know, savory raisiny but nonetheless guys let me know your favorite cereals i guess the mount rushmore of cereals in the comments and yeah maybe we'll start doing this a little bit more than just asking you guys to comment 22 because you made it 22 minutes into the video we shall see obviously a work in progress as always here on the channel all right pelicans taking on the thunder I'm not going to lie, this this line is another one that kind of confused me right off the rip. Um, we have the Pelicans here, minus the two and a half points. Total sitting at 241. Um, we could start with the total. I like this one to go under. I do think that the Pelicans have a way of kind of, I guess, slowing down the Thunder. We saw them play last game um, back in November. It was the only time they've met this season. It was a 110 to 106 game. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to lean towards the under. I know it's kind of crazy to take a Thunder under. I'm rhyming again. I always do that. Um, But yeah, that's the way that we're going to go. In terms of a spread pick, man, this is a tough one because this this line confuses me. Like if I were to set my own line, I would have thought it'd be Thunder, maybe minus the three points or something like that, but it's not. Uh, (laughs) It is tough. I'm going to lean towards the Thunder just because I think they're the better team. I know the Pelicans have some like untapped potential. And honestly, I know they've been kind of up and down, up and down. They've had a pretty tough schedule if you look at it. Whereas the Thunder... 
not necessarily so much, but not like they haven't played anybody, but two of their last four wins have been San Antonio and Portland, right? So it's like, okay, yeah, not the best. But nonetheless, uh, they're the better team. If they're healthy, I got to take a peek at them. I can't kind of ignore that. And they have two days rest here. Um, so, yeah, give me the Thunder in this spot, uh, plus the points, which sounds crazy to say. A player prop I also like is going to be Chet Holmgren, over two and a half assists. Yes, the category that it doesn't really do much of. Um, the volume, I wouldn't say it's necessarily there. 4.1 potential assists over his last seven games. So you're looking at probably a floor of two assists, right? Um, but going up against the Pelicans who allow the fourth most assists to the center position um, and obviously can cover that paint really well. So if he gets in there, I think that there's some driving kick opportunities. Do I wish there's a couple more shooters on OKC that could be waiting for him? Sure, but yeah, three assists is not crazy to ask for. Um, overall, I think it's a it was a similar spot about what we thought about with Porzingis last night. He doesn't cash, so, you know, take this play, I guess, with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? You can always fade anything I'm telling you in the videos. But, yeah, Chet Holmgren over two and a half assists is going to be my player prop lean in this spot. All right, San Antonio taking on the Blazers here. I mean... <laughs> I talked about the Memphis and Orlando game. If you guys out there have like a strong pick in this game, then your psychos. This might be one that rivals that here. Now, from a uh, from an injury perspective here, luckily it looks like we're gonna get Wembenyama. Um, obviously, both teams have had their injury struggles, but fairly healthy for what they've been rolling out the last couple weeks here, right? So, yeah, uh, Wembenyama's playing. I'll lean towards him and the rest of the Spurs here. Does anything in this game become a final play? Probably not, but I don't mind Webanyama's over PRA. Uh, the problem is he's been on some minutes restrictions as of late. Not sure where he stands with that, but uh, I don't mind his points plus assists probably as as maybe the biggest thing because uh, it is down there 27 and a half. And if you look at him passing the ball, like he's not going to get many assists, um, but he's averaging nearly seven potential assists per game. So the chances of him, you know, being able to get four or the potential of him being able to get four, you know, is actually there. Um, and that is his line. You know, he's barely been cashing that. I think he's hit the under in like 61% of games this season, but they're setting that line for a reason because the volume's there. So uh, yeah, I don't mind this spot from... Um, but I, I also don't mind looking at his points because uh, this is obviously a spot in which, you know, the, the, the Trailblazers aren't the best interior defense. Even with Aiton back, still struggle with that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll take a peek at Wembenyama's player props as well, as well as the Spurs. And then when you look at it from a total perspective... I think it's going to be a messy game, not much defense. Give me the over in this spot. 230 and a half seems a little bit too low. Can you trust either offense? Hell no. But you know you can trust that neither one of these defenses is really going to lock up. So I'll take the over in this spot. Root for some young guys to score a bunch of points, huh? <laughs> not young boys, young guys. Or not... Let's, let's not close the video there, guys. That's all we have for you in today's show. I really will say this. Um, if you made it this far, just listen for 30 more seconds because... The channel is is you know trajecting and 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 cruising right now, and we're still putting in a crazy amount of work. Like the sun's not even out yet. Um, we're making these NBA videos, editing them, like like truly feel inspired and ready to grind. And like I said, more and more coming to the channel in the next month or so. Uh, some personal news I could share, you know, at that time as well, which should be pretty damn cool. So yeah, very very excited, and wouldn't be able to do this without the gears that make this thing turn, which is uh, anyone watching, even the guppies. If you're leaving hate comments. Comments. Like all of the engagement uh, helps. They don't boo nobodies. I'm not getting my he feelings hurt if you say your picks suck. It's like whatever, man. But um, appreciate everyone, especially the the OGs, the ones that are tuning in, the ones that have seen the growth. Love it. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so damn much. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, peace out.